Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I'm Jenny and it is our weekly nursery update. Remember, we are here at Creekside Nursery in Dallas, North Carolina. Um, coming to you in the middle of August for our weekly um, tour of the nursery to show you what is in bloom and what is thriving right now. So we're gonna go through a bunch of great shrubs and flowering shrubs and some new perennials that we're growing out. So lots of fun things. So if you have your gardening journal, make sure you grab it and take some notes so that you, if you see something that just jumps out at you, you can write down the name of it. But we are here in the shrub lot with our new addition lately of the pergola that we built here as a display. Um, it's really fun kind of entrance here. We have it lined the entrance way with some Proven Winners Sprinter Boxwoods. So if you don't know what a Sprinter Boxwood is, they are a fantastic evergreen shrub. It was actually developed by um, Dr. Tom Ranny at NC State University. So go Wolfpack, all those people out there. The sprinters are great because they are an evergreen and they can do sun or shade. They are very manageable. They're gonna be somewhere between about like two to four feet, easily pruned, easily managed. They're not gonna be crazy and out of control. Um, and for a boxwood, they are a fast grower. So you can do like what we've done here and create kind of like a hedge. You know, you actually plant them if you have like a formal garden that you wanna do. So you can do that. Um, or you could plant them as great foundation plantings in front of your house to give you some evergreen. And we get tons of people asking about that they want a kind of a manageable shrub to put in a large container that they can keep year round and then change around the bottom. Well, Sprinter would be a great option for you. So let me show you the tag here. So this is Sprinter Boxwood. And it is a Japanese boxwood instead of an English boxwood. So it is, I'm gonna have a lot of natural um, disease resistance to it. So you don't have to worry about the boxwood blight as Jerry just zoomed in. It is deer resistant, so yay for that. Hardy in zones five to nine. Also, I, I, some of y'all complain about that you don't like boxwoods because you think that they smell funny. Um, the Sprinter does not have that smell. So that's the English boxwood. This is a Japanese, so it does not have that smell. So it's deer resistant, sun or shade, um, doesn't smell, and is resistant to boxwood blight. I mean, what's not to love? But come on, let's go this way. So on the pergola, we have, um, we worked with Megan from Proven Winners, and so she helped us come up with these great custom signs between Proven Winners and Creekside Nursery. And so in that picture is Incredible Hydrangea. So clearly you can see it is this massive hedge of hydrangeas um, at a home. And so this is a personal home. He actually is one of the PW executives. And so this is his backyard and it is full of Incredible Hydrangeas, which we have right here. Obviously these are not in bloom right now, um, but they are just that great classic, I'll show you the tag, great classic white, what you just think of, traditional mop head um, blooms on them. When these guys are in bloom, they are absolutely gorgeous. The tag is wet, so I can't get it open. Here we go. Now these are sun hydrangeas. They are gonna be four to five feet tall and wide and they are hardy in zones three to nine. So extremely versatile, very well adapted to just about any kind of growing conditions. Um, with our new patio, I have plans for Incredibles. So that is a great one. Gem Box is another great alternative. So if you're just dead set against the boxwood, Gem Box is a great option for you. It is a petite evergreen shrub it is a, actually an inkberry holly, and it is sun to part shade, zones five to nine, two to three feet tall and wide. Again, does great in the ground, in a container, so forth and so on. We have Pugster, Pugster Blue. If you are looking to attract the butterflies, you cannot go wrong with a butterfly bush. This is just that real petite one. It's like a two by two. Smells great. Butterfly bushes are naturally deer resistant and this is going to be hardy in zones five to nine. 
I mean, it's just fantastic. The butterflies have been all over these. In fact, I'm gonna let Jerry walk ahead of me because there is a gorgeous butterfly on that pugster. So as not to disturb her and her evening meal, I mean, look at that. Now we did just have a huge rain and we had a storm come through. So all the butterflies are probably still drying out somewhere. Uh, but typically during the day when it's nice and hot and sunny, this area is absolutely covered in butterflies of all sizes. So um, this sweet thing, she is out there. And I say she, you know, everything's a she to me. Um, love and life. Now, at the end of the week, we, last week, we got um, two deliveries of shrubs. And I am so excited to show them to you because these are shrubs that we have used over and over and over and over again. And we can sit here and tell you that they are good, hardy, strong shrubs for our region. So they can handle the heat, the humidity, the sun, anything you throw at it, they're gonna be able to handle it. So first of all, let's go through this real quick. We have got four of the limelight trees. So again, that great hydrangea from Proven Winners, limelight. This has been it trained in a tree form or standard form is the nursery term. So it has recently been pruned and you can see all of the new growth on it. Um, it will bloom again before the fall. So it will just have those great white blooms on it that turn to a great limey green. So the hydrangea trees are wonderful for like in the center of a bed. If you um, want to put something on the corner of your house, but you don't want an actual full fledged tree, these are great options for you. Again, limelights do like the sun, so you've got to have a sunny location for it. But what I'm talking about right now is, oh my goodness, both of these are from Southern Living. So these are Southern Living from, from the Southern Living Plant Collection. This is the Sunshine Ligustrums. Now, if you have been around Creekside for any length of time, you know how much we absolutely adore this shrub. It is an evergreen. A lot of times when you come up to it and you touch the foliage, it's a very soft, feels like a very tender kind of foliage and you think, oh, well, it's gonna be deciduous, it's gonna lose its leaves. No, it doesn't. It keeps this great color all year long. It is full sun. So if you were to stick this in the shade, it is going to turn just a regular green. So it's called sunshine for a reason. It needs the sunshine to have this great vibrant green color. Now, size wise on these guys, they are going to be in that three to six foot range. Now, six feet for this guy would be if you never pruned it and or like an extremely mature plant. So we have these up at our mailbox for years. They are around that four foot mark. We prune them once a year just to shape them up. Um, and then that's it. And slow release fertilizer in the spring. And there you go. We love pairing the sunshine legustrums with, look at that color. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? So this is a fantastic one. Another one from the Southern Living, Purple Daydream. Now it is a Laura Pedalum. Now for some of you, when I say Laura Pedalum, y'all just shudder and you run away screaming because you've had a bad experience with the Laura Pedalums that get to be about 15 feet tall. That is not the case with these guys. These are only going to be two to three feet tall, three to four feet wide. They truly are a petite Laura Pedalum. They are fantastic as a foundation plant in front of your house. They are evergreen. They keep this color. Laura Pedalums in the late winter, early, early spring will put on little bright pink blooms because Laura Petalum is also known as a Chinese fringe flower. So they get that because they have the little fringes, um, the little blooms on them. They are going to be full sun to part shade, but love this combination together. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, imagine this year round color at your house and you can mix it with like other kinds of greens. You can throw in, you know, butterfly bushes and all sorts of things in there. It's just a great way to start. Like you cannot go wrong with this combination. All right, let's move up 
and show you some perennials. So we've talked about it before, how you know we are the grower here at Creekside, and we have gotten in um, a couple. Well, gosh, it's probably about a month ago at least now, um, maybe even six weeks ago. We got a huge shipment of perennials from Walters Gardens. Um, they are a wonderful wholesale nursery in Michigan that just give us gorgeous perennial rootstock and plugs. Um, Aquapot's still doing their thing, bless them. But up here I want to show you, because we always tend to go down the pergola and we never come over here, so I, there's a whole section over here that we hadn't even talked about, so I want to show them to you. Um, now, again, we are the grower. These are still babies, they're growing out, so this is not going to be a full-size plant that we're showing you, okay? Just keep that in mind, they're still growing. But right here is the um, Paint the Town series of Dianthus. This is magenta. We have carried this one for years. It is an amazing perennial. It's a low grower. It's a semi-evergreen, so even in the winter you will still have your foliage. It has great blue-green foliage on it. It is going to be hardy in zones, four to nine, loves the sun, does these beautiful hot pink flowers on it with a really nice little sweet smell to it. Love this whole series of Paint the Town. Next, we have Midnight Masquerade. This thing has taken off. <laughs> I mean, like it is a happy, happy plant. So Midnight Masquerade, another fabulous perennial. It is, Jerry, zoom it in. I'm getting ready to take it from him. Um, a Penstemon. So it's going to be a little bit tall. So this will bring you some height where the dianthus is short. This will bring you some height to it. Hardy in zones three to eight. Um, just has that great deep burgundy color to it. And then it'll do those really pretty spikes of purple blooms. Fantastic one. Midnight masquerade type of penstemon. Um, we're going to have some flocks this year, some creeping flocks. So if you, um, I mean, I know here in the south especially, the creeping phlox is one of the very first perennials to bloom in the springtime. So you can be driving down the road and you'll see in people's yards just these carpets of color. A lot of times you'll see them on like steep banks and things like that because this creeping phlox is low and it spreads out. It creeps and then it will put on these gorgeous blooms early in the spring. I mean, it's just one of those first blooms and it's after a long winter you know it is so nice so this is ruby riot um i love that series spring bling <laughs> so much fun oh and then this one i am super excited about jerry kind of wasn't so excited about this but I, I pushed him so a minarda minarda bee balm this is pardon my cerise and so this is fantastic perennial that the butterflies and the hummingbirds absolutely go bananas over. Again, Hardigan Zone is four to eight. It's going to be 14 to 18 inches tall. Um, but Monarda in, traditionally can be really big. Like the, the, um, the old classic Jacob's Klein Monarda, like it can be like as tall as me. Like it can be really big. So this one is a nice, much more manageable, 14 to 18 inches tall. Um, Minarda, but those still the same great blooms, but not the overpowering floppiness of, say, like Jacob's Klein. So we've got those. Um, we've got some grasses. These, this is Apache Rose from Proven Winners. So full disclosure here, this had gotten tucked up in the pines area for the majority of the growing season this year, left over from last year. It didn't get out into the sun until like two weeks ago. So she is coming back. This is an example of we the grower had her in the wrong spot. We knew she was full sun, but it's just one of those things out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. So that's what's going on there. Look at this. Sorry, I, I know I switched gears really fast. Um, I'm trying to find one for you Ooh, without making them all fall. All right, again, you know how to, sometimes I tell you you just need to buy the plant because of the name? Well, this is one of those plants. Boogie woogie. Isn't that fun? So Boogie Woogie is a sedum. It is a perennial. 
Um, so as all sedums are, they love it in lots of sun and heat. Um, this is going to be really a petite one, so only six to eight inches tall, and then it spreads and gets wide. This, it will bloom in those little teeny tiny little yellow blooms that you can see there, but it just has a great color on it, a great beautiful green with creamy edges. Um, it's just, it's a fun one. It's a fun one for sure. So boogie woogie is great. And then some more grasses. This is, I love this one. This is Blue Paradise. Sky is a curium. Um, just a gorgeous perennial blue green grass that is fantastic it brings you height you can leave it up um, even in the winter time it changes kind of color as the season goes on so just brings a lot of height and interest because 36 to 42 inches tall um, and it'll do just a little bit of a, a little bit of a plume on top it's not going to be really um, plumy that's not even a word but you you get what I'm saying as far as like other perennial grasses but it's the color of that blue green foliage that is just fantastic and then of course we have all the different black eyed Susans again we had a big storm that just came through here some of them are falling over so this is the um, native one this is the black eyed Susan this is the Rudbeckia fulgata I'm going to turn it around for you. Got that? There we go. So this is the true native black-eyed Susan. It will naturalize. If you leave um, the heads on them, the blooms, they'll turn to seed. Your finches love to come eat these. And then, of course, they drop their seeds and they will naturalize um, just as happy as can be. But um, let's see. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. Um, of course, we still have all the hostas. All the other stuff is still growing. Um, you can see all of that. Oh, we did that last week. Never mind. I was going to say those shade annuals, but we did that last week. So if you missed that, go to last week's video and you can look at that. Um, aqua pots are, we are taking orders for those. So we got lots of um, requests that people have already put in putting in their name and their deposits for their aqua pots for next spring. So if you are interested in purchasing an aqua pot for next year, you can check out our website, gardeningwithcreekside.com. All the information is right there. Remember, an aqua pot is that fantastic self-watering container from Proven Winners, Jack Barnwell, and Michael Carr. So it was a collaboration between the three of them. They are wonderful. We have used them all season and have been highly impressed with them gorgeous gorgeous ceramic pots that are self-watering and you only have to water the pot, the pot once a week it's fantastic so if you're interested go, go check that out but anyway make sure um, that you like the video if you're not a member of gardening with creekside please subscribe join the family we'd love to have you here and uh, <laughs> i do not know what jerry's doing oh he's <laughs> you really should see his face behind the camera y'all i'm sorry mums Mums will be, um, they're coming. We have some that are cracking color. Again, remember mums bloom early, mid, and late bloomers. So the early ones are starting to crack some color. I, I personally think, this is my theory, y'all. If you wear blue jeans and you buy fall things, then the weather has to turn, right? I mean, doesn't that make sense? You wear blue jeans, you get your mums, you start drinking your pumpkin spiced coffees, um, you do all that and then the weather will like change on a dime. So if we all do that, then we can get rid of this heat and humidity here in the south really quickly. Okay, thanks. Appreciate that. Okay, see y'all next week. Bye friends.